What's going on guys? Today I'm gonna to show you guys the top five accessories you guys should look at if you're gonna put in a lift. So just about four years ago at this point, um, I put in this lift. It was actually the, the first set of videos that I ever shot for YouTube. Um, if you guys wanna go take a look at those, I'll put a card up in the corner to that. Honestly, for me, it's pretty cringeworthy because I really didn't know how to edit and I really didn't know what the heck I was doing. Not that I really know much more than that now, but anyway, um, I still, to this day, I get tons of comments on my lift as far as, oh man, you know, I'd really love to have one of those. Having a lift has to be fantastic. And quite frankly, it is. Um, I love this thing. I use this thing all the time. So like I said, I've been using this thing like four years now. You guys have been following along with me. Uh, you guys have seen, you know, for a, for a DIY homeowner type person, I do a lot of work with this thing. Um, honestly, I love it. Even to this day, um, I wouldn't change anything about it. The only thing I would change is maybe make the shop a little bit bigger, but you know, that costs more money. Um, the nicest thing about it, other than the fact that, you know, I'm not crawling around on the ground, is it's essentially doubling my parking area. So it's turning this one car shop into a two car shop. If I take the truck off of here, put my car on here, I can pull another car in underneath it and suddenly it's a two car garage. So in that regard, fantastic. Not crawling around on the ground, fantastic. But with that said, um, when I put this thing in, I was more or less concerned with, I have to get the lift, I have to get the lift, I have to get the lift. So I got the lift and then it was like, oh crap, there's, there's some other stuff that I have to get here to make this thing useful. So that's what we're gonna go over in this video. So with that, let's get started. So as far as honorable mentions, first thing is a garage door opener. So if you guys take a look at my ceiling, there is no traditional style garage door opener in the middle of my ceiling that I could run the vehicle into the bottom of the garage door opener. Um, I use a jack shaft style opener that basically just turns the shaft that the garage door springs are connected to and that's how the door goes up and down. Um, like I said, it keeps my ceiling wide open and Realistically, the only time that I've ever really had a problem as far as running a vehicle into the garage door with a garage door open is usually a large SUV like an Expedition or maybe even an Explorer or something like that, that, um, you know, the back of the vehicle is just large. Um, pickups, small SUVs, cars, never had an issue whatsoever with the door up or down. Okay, so this next honorable mention is going to be a case of do as I say and not as I do. Um, what is it? Frame cradle pads. These are not frame cradle pads. Um, frame cradle pads are U-shaped, grab either side of the frame and basically keep the arm from moving left and right. It basically kind of locks into the frame with a lip on each side. Um, as you can see, I don't have them. Um, but with that said, three quarters of the stuff that I do is usually unibody vehicles with about, like I said, a quarter of that being trucks. And that style of adapter is really only designed to be used on trucks. Um, with that said, as long as you're cautious, you can get by with it, with just you know the standard adapters that the lift comes with. Um, obviously, if you're gonna be doing a lot of heavy truck work, you know, three quarter, one ton stuff on a consistent basis, yeah, it's spring for them. But for me, at home, I don't. I only have a Colorado is the biggest vehicle that I own. So for me, these work just fine. Um, with that said, the biggest vehicle that I've had on this lift with these pads was, I believe it was a 2017, 2018 uh, Ram with a Cummins in it, mega cab, and a short bed. I mean, it was all I could do just to fit it in the garage. Um, lifted it with these pads. Obviously, once you get the balance right, it's fine. Um, but again, if you're gonna be doing a lot of heavy truck work, definitely look into upgrading to the uh, frame cradle pads. Truck adapters. 
So what these truck adapters do is just space out the lifting pad between, they put more distance between the arm and the pad themselves to give you clearance for running boards on a pickup truck or an SUV. Um, one thing that I have found is these are the standard ones that came with my lift being the screw pad and the truck adapter. They weren't long enough. <laughs> so I had to buy these separate. I actually made these myself um, on a lathe. Some of the vehicles that I was dealing with, especially when you get into the three quarter and one ton trucks, the frame sits higher up on the pickup truck in relation to the body. So the bodies hang fairly low. Um, the, one, the one that I've found for certain are F-250s, F-350s, like uh, 2011 to 2017. Um, for whatever reason, the bodies on those hang real low and you need a long truck adapter like this to be able to grab the frame and not crunch the bottom of the body in. So certain vehicles, 100%, you're gonna need these. Number four is gonna be a pole jack. Why? Because when you get a big truck up on the lift, it's nice to be able to somewhat stabilize it. So check this out guys, one finger, See how much I can make that vehicle move? So if you put this underneath here, put a little bit of upward pressure on it, the vehicle's much more stable. Now, when this kind of comes into its own is removing big parts, fuel tanks, axles, transmissions, things like that. When you start changing the center of gravity of the, of the vehicle by removing large components, kind of need one of these because that's what's ultimately going to keep the car from falling off the lift. The reason I really like using these pole jacks on trucks guys is trucks are so much longer than cars. What ends up happening is the length of the vehicle acts as like a lever over the post. So the further you get away from the post, the more force is exerted on that post going back and forth as the vehicle, you know, rocks as you're working on it. So by putting in the pole jack in here, as you guys saw, it is a lot more stable. There's no rocking, there's no movement. It's rock solid when it's, you know, five, six feet in the air like this. All right, number three, the transmission jack. So at this point, I'm sure some of you are going, okay, why would you want to own a transmission jack before you own a pole jack? Um, the quick answer to that is the transmission jack will do the exact same thing as a pole jack. It's just a little more bulky and a little less convenient. So in that regard, there you go. It's supporting the bottom of the truck, just like the pole jack. So in that regard, absolutely. If I had to pick one, either the pole jack or the transmission jack, Transmission jack every time because it'll do both. Um, but with that said, you know, if you guys are going to remo be removing obviously transmissions, axles, fuel tanks, any large component underneath the, the bottom of a vehicle, this is how you go about doing it. Um, obviously, if you're a much stronger person than I am, you could put the transmission on your shoulder and just muscle it into place. But when you're 135 pounds soaking wet, not going to happen. Transmission jack. Highly recommend it. All right, so number two is gonna be the extended oil drain. Um, this to me is 100% necessary. If you're gonna to go to the time and expense of putting in a lift, there's no reason you can't change your own oil. And if you're gonna change your own oil, you literally need one of these. Um, let's face it, your alternative, if you're not gonna use this is, Take a drain pan, hold it in your hands, and then, you know, obviously when it's done draining, try and put the drain bolt back in, one-handed, holding the pan with, you know, between five and eight quarts of oil in it. Don't bother. These things are relatively cheap. I think they're between 80 and $100. You know, this is a pretty basic one that I have here, holds about eight gallons. 
And for home use, it's more than enough. Um, you aren't gonna find any vehicle that's gonna fit on this lift that's gonna have an eight gallon oil drain on pretty much any fluid in the vehicle. So the number one thing that you need to buy if you want a lift, tool tray. I realize it has nothing to do with the lift itself, but guys, I'm telling you, when you go from working on the ground to working right here in front of you, you have nowhere to put your tools. So naturally, when you're sitting on the ground working on something, you just set your tools on the ground or your parts on the ground or whatever. But when you're standing up, you have nowhere to put anything except for a cart. Most of you guys have probably never even seen this thing in my videos because nine times out of 10, when I'm shooting a repair video, this is where the tripod is. It sits right here. So when I first got the lift and I didn't have this thing, literally what I was doing was these walls over here weren't even finished and I was setting my tools and my parts in between the studs of the wall. And it soon occurred to me that something like this is completely necessary. Um, I know a lot of guys will use um, tool carts and things like that. And the issue is with the tool cart, when the lid is closed, the drawers are locked. So if you have any big parts that you need to basically set down or keep near you or whatever, you set them on top of the cart. Well, if you set them on top of the cart, you can't open the drawers. And if you can't open the drawers, you can't get to your tools. So then you have to take the parts off the top of the cart, open the lid, get your tools out, set the top down, pick up the part, put it back up on top. Giant pain in the butt. I'm telling you, this by far, anytime I do anything with this lift, I use this thing. Because without it, otherwise, you're setting your tools and your parts and whatever on the ground. So you're constantly you know, reaching down to pick stuff up. All right guys, so that is my list of the top five accessories that you need to seriously consider if you're gonna buy a lift. Um, realistically, most of the stuff on there is actually relatively inexpensive. Um, with the exception of like the transmission jack, those things can range from, you know, 150 to, you know, six, $700. It just depends on what you wanna spend. Um, I'll link all the stuff that I have down in the description if you guys wanna check any of this stuff out, you know, check the pricing on it or whatever. Um, but yeah, as always guys, if you guys like the video, hit like. If you wanna see more content, go down and hit subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys.